Hi there, Simon from Manchester Wine School or simonwoods.com. Whichever you choose, I'll be there for you. Uh, and today I'm here for you with a couple of wines with a d definite Rioja e accent. Uh, one of them is a Rioja, uh, so I've got a white Rioja, and the other one is a Tempranillo. Uh, and uh, okay, Rioja doesn't have to include any Tempranillo if you uh, uh, if you so choose, uh, but uh, most of them do. Anyway, uh, so the white. Uh, it is Luis Cañas uh, Venus, Venus Viejas and um, from the Rioja Alavesa 2019 um, and uh, the, the Blanco. Uh, so uh, I think the blend here, I think he's got 10% Malvasia in there, but uh, uh, it's mostly mostly Viora. And uh, let's have a sniff. Well, the in terms of the uh, viekiness of the Vinas, I think it, well, it says on the back, 57 years old. I don't know whether that's 57 years old now when the wine's been released or 57 years old last year when the grapes were picked, in which case they'll be 58 years. Never mind, we won't go there too much, but uh, I stick my nose in there. And it is what I expect from uh, the uh, upmarket modern end of uh, White Rioja. So there is uh, that slightly uh, pithy, uh, really fresh, uh, lemon but with a little bit of preserved lemons in there that uh, almost not vinegary but th th there's something that's a little bit more uh tart and spicy um let's have another sniff yeah the, 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 there's something there that is uh, almost uh, as the americans say herbal uh and that's that, that that's what i think of as uh, as uh, viola uh from from tempranillo but what's uh, what there is also here from thanks to the five months uh, that it's spent in barrel uh, there is a little touch of, um, yeah, not not sawdusty type of wood, but just this gentle vanilla uh, woody sheen. And it's not that over the top coconutty that sometimes you get in uh, a certain style of the red Rioja, but there is certainly uh, a woody imprint here. Let's take a taste. Nice wine that is really nicely balanced between the uh, uh, the freshness of the fruit and the amount of the oak. Sometimes I have this concern when people shove barrel uh, shove wines into barrels for a shortish time because what happens in the first few months that the wine's in the barrel it picks up a lot of those oak flavors without it uh, the wine benefiting from the uh, maturation and the elevage elements and uh, but here five months seems to have uh, treated that very nicely uh, so there is that little bit of wood spice that you're you're getting um coming through adding a little bit more framework to the fruit um uh, but there is also um, yeah, this juicy lemon and, uh, as I said, the preserved and the fresh lemons, uh, some pithiness as well, uh, and the herbs, and uh, maybe something that is uh, uh, a little bit more fragrant, almost like a honeyed edge, maybe the honeyed and going into the honeysuckle, maybe that's the uh, influence of, of the, the Malvasia. But, um, yeah, nice alternative to, uh, uh, to Chardonnay. Nice wine. Let's see whether the uh, second one's a nice wine. Uh, well, I know it is because I've tried it already, so shh, don't tell the camera. Anyway, uh, second wine is Yolumba's Y Series Tempranillo from South Australia. Uh, I'm not sure where, whereabouts in South Australia, uh, but uh, there are these uh, plantations of uh, more and more non-French grapes springing up all everywhere you go now in Australia because they're more drought resistant than the French stuff, and Australia is struggling with uh, um, not having not having as much water as it would like to have to, in order to. Uh, uh, to do agriculture on the scale it would like to do. Anyway, um, so let's give it a whirl and let's give this a sniff. So um, it's, this is an unoaked wine, uh, so there is none of that uh, oaky sheen. Uh, there is, this is Tempranillo in its uh, purest, uh, crunchiest form, uh, and it differs slightly from the, uh, the Spanish style of, of Tempranillo. Maybe there's a little bit more uh, red berry um, and um, a slight confection I don't know that the, the, there's something here that uh, uh, veers almost more to the uh, cola like edge which you sometimes a cola is something I uh, flavor I associate a bit more with Sangiovese than uh, uh, than Tempranillo but I get a little bit of that here but a bit of spice as well um, and um, it smells like it's going to be one of those crunchy young fresh reds despite that I look 14% alcohol anyway that's it for taste so there's red berries there, but there's also darker berries when I come to taste it. A bit of cherry, a bit of spice, um, almost like a chocolatey hint. And um, I, I almost call it slightly savoury. 
um, in uh, as in uh, when you the, the, the flavors that you're left with on the finish are not those uh, sweet fruity ones is it? there isn't there are touches of those uh, but there is something that's uh, yeah a little bit more um, uh, yeah not in your face fruity it's uh, that there is a depth there is a richness there um, and it's not a hugely complex wine but it's one of those that you sort of taste taste that finish and you just go oh I want another slug of that so I'm going to have another slug tasty wine um, I mean it's um, it's not Rioja uh, not trying to be Rioja much in the same way that um, when you get Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, uh, Napa Valley it's not trying to be Bordeaux I wish it is but don't tell them uh, but you know they, they are di we've, we've learned to uh, see that there is a difference between Cabernet Sauvignon from here and Cabernet Sauvignon from there so it stands to reason that Tempranillo from here will be different from Tempranillo from Rioja and from Ribera del Duero and from the Douro Valley uh, where it's uh, Tinta Rorige. Um, but um, but nice yeah nice for a nice uh, alternative uh, string to Tempranillo's bow and uh, at a I seem to remember a rather attractive price hey see you soon